whether concept lattices fit in the data analysis toolset. Perhaps the first thing that comes to mind is clustering. In clustering, one has a data set that must be split into several subsets, usually disjoint, so that elements of the same subset are fairly similar to each other, and elements in different subsets are, well, sufficiently different. Clustering is used in many applications. One may want to split news articles coming from various sources into groups of articles describing the same events. In marketing, people want to identify groups of consumers with similar buying patterns. In recommender systems, it's useful to see groups of users with similar interests. Or in a completely different area, image segmentation, one needs to group together pixels that are likely to belong to the same object. In biology, cluster analysis can be used to identify groups of similar species. For example, if we have a data set of animals, we might want to split it into the following four clusters. The cluster on the left groups insects, the one on the right corresponds to mammals, the top one contains the two birds of the dataset, and the one at the bottom has a single element, an octopus. Sometimes it makes sense to split a large cluster into small ones, but somehow remember that objects from the new small clusters are more similar to each other than to objects from other clusters. This is what hierarchical clustering does. We start from the large cluster containing the entire dataset, split it into several smaller clusters, then split each of them into several even smaller clusters, and so on, until we obtain a single element clusters. Or we can do it in a different way. Start with single element clusters, join some of them into bigger clusters, then join again and so on, until we get a cluster corresponding to the entire dataset. Either way, we get a tree of clusters, the root being the entire dataset with single element clusters in the leaves. In our example, we have the large cluster containing all the animals split into the four small clusters we've already seen. And then we might want to isolate these three yellow insects into a cluster of bees and wasps within the larger cluster of all insects. Sometimes it may be desirable not only to split the dataset into clusters or to build a system of nested clusters, but also to provide a description for each generated cluster. This is called conceptual clustering, and it's roughly what formal concept analysis does. Every concept in a concept lattice is a group of objects defined by the concept extent, and it is supplied with the description given by the concept intent. Of course, concept extents don't have to be disjoint, they can overlap, and they don't even have to be subsets of each other. So, a concept extent is not a group of objects that are similar to each other and different from other objects in a general sense, rather it's a group of objects that are similar to each other and different from other objects in some particular aspects, specified by the concept intent. Thus, a concept lattice shows groups of objects built on different grounds simultaneously, each group with its own description. Depending on which aspects are more relevant to a particular application, several different cluster systems can be extracted from a concept lattice. Let's see an example of such conceptual clustering. This is part of a slightly modified zoo dataset from the UCI Machine Learning Repository. It contains over a hundred of animals described by 15 attributes. The concept lattice of this dataset contains over 200 concepts, but we'll look only at some of them. There are various techniques for selecting concepts from the concept lattice. One is based on so-called concept stability, which we'll define in a few weeks. Here we've selected the most stable concepts. We can see that the resulting lattice splits all the animals into three top-level groups, animals with a backbone and a tail, those who lay eggs, and those who breathe. Actually, split is not the right word here, because some of the animals belong to more than one group. Thus, animals with a backbone and a tail 
contain three further subgroups. Those among them who breathe, those who lay eggs, and those who have teeth. If we change a little bit how we select the concepts, we might get the following structure of so-called locally stable concepts. Here, every node uh, corresponds to some meaningful set of animals. So, for example, this node groups almost all the mammals that exist in our data set. This is the, and it also gives a definition for them. So, mammals according to this data set are those who have backbone, who breathe, who are cat size, which means they're at least the size of a cat, who have hair, produce milk, have a tail, and have teeth. Another concept is the concept of fish. Well, it contains almost all the fish from the data set. Then we can see a concept that groups together a seal and a sea lion, which also kind of makes sense. And if you look closely enough, you can see a concept that corresponds to birds.